grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is another portion of our scripture lesson for this past Sunday from Acts chapter 2, verses 40 and 41. With many other words, Peter warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. My dear friends in Christ, wash your hands maybe 20, 30 times or even more every day. Wash your hands, put a mask on, wear gloves if you ever go to the grocery store, don't touch your face. Make sure that when you're around somebody who's not from your household, make sure you're keeping proper social distancing. Don't go anywhere unless you have to. We're probably all kind of getting a little bit tired of the warnings that we're getting. And, well, maybe those warnings are warnings that we need to hear and that are good for us. But in a sense, you really would think that we should be getting used to hearing warnings because we've heard warnings throughout our life when we were youngsters. Well, what did our parents tell us? Don't put that in your mouth. Don't put that in the electric socket. Don't talk to strangers. Don't do drugs. We're used to hearing warnings like that all the time. And unfortunately, we do need to hear those warnings because oftentimes you and I just aren't smart enough to stay away from all of those things that that could be dangerous to us. And, and sometimes what's the case is that when we hear a warning, when it says, thou shalt not, then what happens is that all of a sudden there's something inside of us that wants what we can't or shouldn't have. And, well, sometimes we just simply want to do what we're not supposed to do, our sinful nature. It can cause us so much grief. Our reading for today says, With many other words, Peter warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. What's recorded for us in the book of Acts of Peter's Pentecost sermon, it's maybe about 25 verses, and and if you look at that section, if I were to read that section out loud, I could probably read it out loud in about five minutes or so. And so when you think about Peter's message that day, it had to be longer than that. Well, it says it was longer than that. What Peter and the apostles could have done is they could have talked to the people about Jesus' miracles, uh, about his Sermon on the Mount, his parables, they could have talked all about his suffering and death, which that was included in the message there, but they could have gone into so much more detail talking about all of those different things. They could have talked about all of those Old Testament prophecies that Jesus did fulfill. Peter had to warn them, give them all kinds of warnings about how Satan the unbelieving world around us and how our own sinful flesh is always trying to tear us away from God, rob us of our eternal salvation. When he says here, when Peter says here, save yourselves from this corrupt generation, oh, perhaps to put that into today's language, he seems to be saying, Wear your spiritual mask and gloves so that the sin virus that's in the world doesn't end up getting you. But the Greek word that's used here for save is actually a, a passive verb. And the way this more literally maybe could be translated is this. Be saved from this corrupt 
generation. And the thought of that is really that Jesus has done everything that's necessary to win our eternal salvation. He died on the cross to pay for our sins. He lived the perfect life so that he could give us his righteousness, his holiness. He did everything and now it's just simply saying, simply believe this and you'll have the benefits of what Jesus has done. And now see, it's through words like these that the Holy Spirit can work on a person's heart. Through words like these, what the Holy Spirit can do is call people to faith in Jesus. And if a person already is a believer, he can work on his heart to build him up and strengthen him in his faith. And well, as you're hearing these words right now, well, the Holy Spirit's still working to build you up and strengthen you in your faith. Well, our reading says, those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Oh, the Holy Spirit did his work. He changed unbelievers into believers that day. He worked on believers' hearts and let them know that this Jesus was the one that they were looking to, that he's the fulfillment of those Old Testament prophecies. Uh, a great number of people, by the grace of God, were able to see Jesus as their Savior that day. Well, remember, before Jesus ascended into heaven, what he did is he said to his disciples, go and make disciples by teaching and baptizing. And Pentecost was such a special day for the Holy Spirit working on people's hearts that day and working through word and sacrament to reach people. And, and that day makes it very clear, very, very obvious to us that the word works. It does some amazing things. And now, oftentimes church leaders today kind of look at that and maybe get a little bit frustrated because, well, 3,000 that day get frustrated because the work of the church doesn't usually get those big monstrous numbers. But you know what you have to remember is that the, the job of the church is, as I said before, go and make disciples by baptizing and teaching, by using word and sacraments to reach people. And, and the results, that's in the hands of the Holy Spirit He'll work on people's hearts. He'll get things done. And there will be rejoicing by the angels in heaven over that one sinner who repents, who believes that Jesus is his Savior, who believes that Jesus did everything for him. And actually, if you're listening to this right now, well, that means that the Holy Spirit is working. You're hearing the word of God. The Holy Spirit is working on your heart. If you're not a believing child of God right now, well, the Holy Spirit could be working to make you one of God's believing children. If you are a believing child of God, well, the Holy Spirit is working to build you up and strengthen you in your faith. Whenever the word of God is being proclaimed, it's kind of as if it's a, a mini Pentecost. The Holy Spirit doing his amazing work. So we're going to keep on doing what Peter did. Well, warning the people, then pointing them to Jesus the Savior. That's what I need to hear. That's what you need to hear. And that's what the world needs to hear. Preaching the gospel, preaching, well, sin and grace, law and gospel. Why? Because the word works and it does some amazing things. Amen. Let's pray.
Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for working through the word on our hearts. Thank you for making us your children. Thank you for reaching out to those who are unbelievers to work on their hearts so that they too could be made believing children of God. Please help us in all of our efforts to get that word out. And today we also pray thinking of former pastor of Calvary Congregation, that's Pastor Kurt Holub and his wife Jean, their son Aaron, his son Gideon, nine-year-old, he passed away on, on Saturday, he had cancer. Lord God, we thank you that in your grace and mercy, you made Gideon one of your believing children. Now, we're thankful that he's with you, Lord God, in heaven. Comfort his dad, Aaron. Comfort his grandparent and his mom. Comfort his, his grandparents, Pastor Kurt and, and Jean Hollow. Comfort them with that wonderful hope that we have that that's because the Holy Spirit works. And he makes people believing children and makes us heirs of heaven. We're so blessed because that word does work. It's working on our hearts. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Amen. And because the word works, I wanted to share with you hymn number 293. God's word is our great heritage and shall be ours forever to spread its light from age to age shall be our chief endeavor through life it guides our way in death it is our stay lord grant while worlds endure we keep its teachings pure throughout all generations and the lord bless and keep you always amen